The true meaning of life is to plant trees. And I speak of the naked king. Now even the little child knows that trees and other green are a staple of life, a shelter from the scorching sun, a thing of beauty. Ropes are attached to trees to make swings. And who among us here has not climbed up a tree? Against parents' instructions. Same parents who in fact climb trees. What about those who have broken an arm or a leg climbing trees? We never knew there were environmental needs for trees, at least not until we were taught in science that trees take in carbon dioxide and produce oxygen, just like magic. We never knew until science lesson about chlorophyll and photosynthesis. And lately, we have learned about wetlands and the ability of trees to soak up water and reduce flood. We have learned to live with trees, just like we dress up not to be naked. Areas without trees are naked, ugly in some way. So when the white man plants an area in Lagos called Ikui along the lines of the Garden City movement, such a legacy area ought to be well looked after and studied in detail for generations. Same would have gone for the GRA areas in Apapa and Ikeja. But you have to give it to Nigerians. They have destroyed Ikui through a combination of greed, stupidity, lack of necessary finesse and class, poor landscape, culture, incompetent government. In Nigerian parlance, government made up largely of bush people. Today, as we speak, Lagos state government is decimating the tree population of Ikoi. It is like war up there. Just look at these photos and videos from Papa Omotayo, an architect. Real estate reduced to nonsense. What hope does Oshodi have to grow positively if the king of areas is on the way down? The same Garden City movement that produced Hampstead or Welling Garden City in the UK under the tenets laid down by Ebenezer Howard in 1898 produced the Kui, probably Africa's first, an area that should have spoken to our need for calm as we would have been used to in our villages. Hampstead is still there, intact, along with Hampstead Garden suburb and all the others. Meanwhile, our king is naked. Shame on Lagos State and her relevant offices and officers. Old Ikui is dead. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> Old Roger, don't oh, die. Oh, Old Roger, Roger. <laughs> Old Roger is dead. <laughs> wow. Old Roger is dead. What a slice of history there. Yeah, um, you, you see, um, I, um, I, my first time in, um, in Atlanta, you know, I was in Douglasville and, you know, I noticed um, my friend was moving, so I helped him relocate to a new area. So I was like, you know, the way the, 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 the area was planned, yeah. so you leave out, you know, some trees, there are always trees before the nest house. And I was like, why? Are there no reptiles? And he laughed at me, so oh, this is Nigerian <laughs> mentality. You people believe that you know, everything must be cleaned up. And I know you have to leave this thing. And sometimes, because also, some of these trees act as windbreakers and, you know, you know, start teaching me. And, and, you know, I looked at, I then I look back at Nigeria, how a man will just sit down and say, ah, this tree, which feed a patch for in the night, to, you just bring it down. <laughs> oh, bring that. In other society, you need the county permission mm. to That's even right. bring down that tree. But here, you just sit down and just say, you know what, cut it. I remember as a child who climbed trees, you know, just climb trees to relax, yeah. you know, sometimes. Then I still remember. Care. And then now I look at my children. I, I, I look they at them. They're not climbing trees. And you know, my first son, the first time he went to boarding house, the thing that fascinated him the most, even though he was crying, was that he came back from meet him and he was so happy that he, you know, him and his friends, they climbed a tree, mm -hmm. you know. And they were just sitting down there watching football match on from top of the there. tree. From <laughs> up there. Yeah, you know, and, and, and really, we, we, we need to understand that we cannot, you know, fight with nature yeah. and expect a, a good society. It's mm. impossible. Isn't that part of what COVID is teaching us? To pause, yes, yes. to allow nature to have its place. Mm. I mean, look at all the, the place like... Um, was the space that used to be filled with mucky waters suddenly clean? clean. The, the swans came out, you know, mm. to balance nature. That's what it mm. is about. Mm. But, but as you said, Chuka, the combination of greed, stupidity, badly, mm. man, 
took her, you were hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get... It will surprise you guys to know that there's, to um, there's a means. law in Lagos someone, that says someone. you cannot cut those trees yes. without permission. Yes. So oh, there's the, a law in Lagos. Yes, yes. What has well, you happened? Cut the tree, you, you, you cut trees, you replant. Yeah. They what, make money from planting planting. Trees. what has happened is that Lagos State has decided to disobey its own law. Its own law. Because it can. And then it will give you any excuse it feels like giving you. That's what is happening it's, right it's, now. It's, they it's have actually given sad. their silly reasons. And that's really where we are at. That, that law is for us, mm. but yeah. not for some, them. Some, some years ago, someone brought a, a transaction for me when I was in banking. And it was... Uh, a, a build a development and we found out we couldn't do that development because the place was declared a green belt you're not meant to clear it it's meant to just be like that i, I just won't mention the place in lagos you know but today a few years down the line yeah. i just took i took a drive down there the whole place is fully built up so when you now say oh there is flooding here there is this there that oh, yeah. where do you think they're coming from mm -hmm. nafisat can you weigh in on this now Yes, as this issue of um, you know the environment just came up, I remembered about um, I thought about Wangari Masai. She was a, um, a Kenyan civil society actor, also a politician and an environmentalist. That during her own time, she spearheaded um, um, rural women planting trees in their various communities. You know, she's dead now, but she did a whole lot of good. It is one thing that, and honestly, it boils down to education about sustainable, um, sustainable development and global warming. These are also part of the issues that contribute to the headsman crisis in the north that is now leaking over to different parts, you know, societies in the south and the east. We, uh, part of me feels like it's a matter of education. Do they understand that these trees in themselves are important for how life will be for the environment. And then you now look at our laws and policies. Do they reflect this information, this news, this global warming information that we have, that the environment needs to be protected? And that means that we should not go ahead and start cutting down all the trees that exist in this particular vicinity. The environment is something that we need to protect. And it's something that this government, in fact, all of us, need to understand and you educate other people about what, that you are cutting down needs to be preserved because of the environment. That's how basic it goes down to. So it even goes down to the essence of education and letting people know about sustainable development. And then having putting pressure on the government to take responsibility for these particular things and let it reflect in the laws and policies that they make on a daily basis. Right. Okay. Well, trees are always a relief. So please bring our trees back. Now, we appreciate you sharing our, your thoughts with us. It seems many people are provoked by Libros' advocacy, Nigerians destroying Nigeria. Ni Ashete is asking, is Nigeria going to be like Mali? Are Nigeria current leaders driving the country into abyss? Hmm, I wish I had an answer. Obajino Obafemi says, you try to be different, you incur the wrath of government officials, agencies, who would put up all lies from the pit of hell to justify their actions or inactions. They would call you names and make you look foolish or even criminalize you beyond imagination. They would whoop up support from the public and leave you struggling with your defense. That's how bad we are. The judiciary, oh no, don't even think about it at all. It's really frustrating in this country. It's actually in our hands to, the better, to better the country if we choose to. Also, Maxi Ogbedi says on Liberals' advocacy, Good morning, sir. My name is Maxi Ogbedi head of the consular section, Embassy of Nigeria, Brussels, Belgium. The opinion you expressed in your commentary is indeed a far cry from what obtains in my mission. <laughs> and I say this with every sense of humility and service. I'm sure no one has visited this mission since 2017 when I took over the consular section, which hold any contrary view as we make deliberate efforts here to ensure that Nigerians and indeed all visitors to the mission get quality service and attention. Interesting. Whereas Timothy Uzondu is speaking on Nafisa's advocacy, national cohesion, and the way forward. He says, Nigerian youth need to unite to change our dear nation. Thank you, Ni Ashete, Obajina Obafemi, Maxi Ogbedi, and Timothy Uzondu for your feedback. 
We may not agree, but this is definitely broadening the conversation. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. Now, to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, also called Plus TV Africa. After the break, Nafisa will be advocating for the survival of small businesses in our nation, Nigeria. Thank you.